Welcome to the shift list. My name is Matt and this is the Toyota Sequoia in the full off-road TRD Pro trim. And today I'm going to show you everything you need to know about it. We're going to start with the question, what is this thing? Well, this is Toyota's largest SUV, at least the one that's truck based, built on the TNGAF body on frame chassis that shares with the Tundra, the Tacoma, the incoming 4Runner, as well as some of the Lexus options. And this has the TRD Pro treatment, which means it's the most off-road ready one. And it also means it's the only one that gets this really cool and unique Terra paint color. Every year, TRD Pros get a unique color only for the TRD Pro. But ultimately, you can think of this thing as kind of the SUV twin to the Toyota Tundra. But what's new for 2024? This isn't a fully new generation year, but of course there's some little changes here and there. There you get a new nightshade trim for some added styling and blacked out appearance package. And you can now get the TRD off-road package on your 4x4 equipped platinum trims. And then we'll venture under the hood to talk about the engine. Now there's a couple unique things happening under the hood here. First of all, you've got some Easter eggs here. This has been R&D'd in Michigan and it's born slash built in Texas. So this is actually one of the more American options that you can buy. But this Sequoia will only come as this engine here. This is the 3.5 twin turbo V6 hybrid iForce Max engine. Here it makes 437 horsepower and 563. That's a lot of torque. You've got a 10 speed automatic transmission. It'll do zero to 60 in under six seconds. And this is also the only hybrid in the segment. And it has the most power too, except for, I guess, technically the Expedition Timberline has three more horsepower, but this thing has loads and loads of torque. But this thing is big and it is heavy, and that has a fuel economy penalty. This may be a hybrid, but you can't totally tell by looking at the fuel economy. I struggled to even get 15 mpg this week, and the EPA, granted they're probably not testing in this weather, but the EPA says it should get uh, 19 to 20 mpg. So if you're looking for a nice, economical, unthirsty off-road SUV? <laughs> Maybe not the Sequoia TRD Pro. And we mentioned the size. This thing is big, but it doesn't really translate to the interior, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But this thing weighs 6,150 pounds, oof. And the TRD is actually three inches taller than any of the other Sequoias, and half of that, or half an inch of that, comes from your suspension lift and your Fox shocks, and the other bit comes from the pretty cool looking roof basket or roof tray that you get up here that's covered in ice this week, but pretty cool. But then we're gonna talk about looks and this is one of my favorite things about this truck. Now we did talk about the Terra paint color. It's kind of like this burnt brownish orange color, unique to only 2024 TRD Pro Toyotas. Very cool. Personally, if it were me, I would go maybe white or last year's Solar Octane was bright orange and that was really, really cool. But we'll talk specifically about the grill. Now this is Toyota's classic heritage grill that says Toyota across the front of it. And you do see that you have these amber marker lights, which also say TRD in them. Now the interesting thing is that is only necessary mandated by federal law for vehicles over 87 inches wide. This is technically 0.4 inches narrower than it does than it needs to be to have these lights. So it doesn't technically need these lights unlike something like a Raptor, but it has them because why? Because they look cool. And you know what else looks cool? This TRD LED light bar in your grill. And it comes on with your high beams and it comes on when you're off-roading when you want it to. So that is kind of a nice feature. But then around the side, you can see we have some etched camo, kind of digital camo effect to your wheel arch cladding. And then you've got 18 inch BBS forged TRD Pro wheels wrapped in Falcon Wild Peak ATW3, or excuse me, AT3W tires, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. But then you see you've got TRD running boards, which are a bit of a liability. They're not quite wide enough to be super helpful, especially when they're caked with ice like they are on the other side. And they do kind of hamper your off-road ground clearance, but you can take them off if you want. And then up here, we talked about the cool roof basket. It does look cool. You can put stuff up there and look even cooler, or you can put nothing up there and just have the added wind noise that it gets. And then around back, you can see it says Sequoia in nice big font. Got blacked out badging, LED taillights, and dual TRD stamped exhaust. And there's a couple TRD Easter eggs. We talked about the ones in the marker lights that you have here. You've also got TRD stamped onto your skid plate up here. And I hope you can see, hold on. 
And I hope you can see it says TRD on your shock body itself, as well as all the way at the top at the upper control arm. I can't see what the camera's seeing, so I hope it looked like that. And then in terms of suspension, you do have these Fox shocks, and I hope you can see. Again, I can't see under the car, but they give you a half an inch of lift, which isn't a huge amount. You get about 9.1 inches of clearance, but then you do have these Falcon Wild Peak AT3W tires, but they're a little bit softer. I mean, the lugs aren't as deep as they would be from a standard AT3W that you would buy on the open market. So that's a little bit strange, but you do get the TRD skid plate with red uh, sway bars. And you can see those TRD upper control arms right here. But a huge focus for this and the Tundra was towing. And this Sequoia TRD Pro maxes out at 9,020 pounds of towing capacity. That's because it has almost 600 pound feet of torque. And the new F chassis, the new ladder chassis that it's sitting on, is hundreds of pounds lighter than the last generation. So that translates to more power, less weight, means more towing capacity. Then we're gonna check out the trunk. It is power, you do get a kick gesture, but I'm never good at it, so I'm just gonna click it. Um, but coming in here, this is a place that I struggle with this car. With the rear seats up, you're doing about 11 and a half cubic feet of space, and you can see that that's really not that much. Now, that being said, there's something that you can do about that. You can take this little handle here, and then you can slide it forward, and that'll give you about 22 cubic feet of space. So that is more, but it's still less than you're gonna get in a lot of stuff, and you still have this big hump to overcome. Not only is it raised up from the suspension, but then you have even more to lift stuff over. And then of course, there's this, because the hybrid battery has to go somewhere, and it's right under there. So you've got this shelf that can go on a couple different levels. And that's because your seats here electronically recline, but then they sit kind of high. So you can use this to put up on this level, and then these flap out to give you kind of a smoother transition to get onto the seat back here for a more flat trunk floor. But it is still pretty high. And with these seats down, you're looking at about, I think 49, 48 cubic feet of space. And then with all the seats down, you're looking at about 87 cubic feet of space. And it's just smaller than just about everything in the segment. And we're gonna check out the third row. Second row lifts right out of the way. Only problem is if you have a baby seat, that's not really gonna work, is it? You also got these kind of interesting all season rubber mats with tire tracks because this is an off-roader. But we'll step in. It's relatively easy to step in. Again, keep in mind for this that I'm 6'1". I'm gonna sit behind this seat right here. Looks like I have pretty decent knee room, right? Well, remember, that's with the only 11.5 cubic feet of space. If you want the even reasonable amount of space, you're gonna to have to slide this thing forward. And now, hopefully you can see, I'm very, very uncomfortable. My knees are super high toward my chest. My feet are completely trapped. I can't move. And my head, I mean, f forget about this. You do get some nice stuff though, I guess. You get cup holders back here, power recline, window shades, which is pretty good, and some air vents. But in terms of space, this is just not it, Captain. But let's try the second row. Maybe we'll have more luck. The door is pretty good. You got some storage here. I will say it's not super practical storage. Like this is barely going to work for like a normal water bottle. Plus everyone has big water bottles now. You do have a window shade, which is kind of nice, but we'll step in using the running boards. These are kind of helpful. Ow! Until you slip and hit your shin on the door. Jesus. But I have decent space for my legs. Problem comes with the headroom. So I either have to put my head all the way back here, which is not comfortable, or I'm gonna hit my head and there's nothing I can do. I mean, these like kind of slide or recline a little bit, but I really can't avoid this. And then the other thing is you have a climate zone back here and you have vents and everything, but you don't have heated rear seats. I mean, in something like a Hyundai Palisade, which is like tens of thousands of dollars less, you can get heated and cooled seats. In the Grand Highlander, you can get heated and cooled seats in the second row here. So this is just a little bit of a miss. Plus the floor is like, seven different levels. So this is the basement, this is the first floor, and then this middle bit here between the seats is even higher. It's just not the most practical or spacious interior. But one thing that is nice is 2024 Sequoia TRD Pros. Get this panoramic roof so I can see all the ice on my roof rack. Nice. So we covered back seats, but what about the front seats? You'll probably notice that all of the seats here 
have this kind of camo pattern inlaid here through the perforation. I think it's kind of cool. Paulo doesn't love it, but I don't know. It gives you a little something. It is standard and it's the only way that you can get your TRD Pros. You also got TRD Pro stitched, some red contrast stitching through the seats, but these seats are heated and cooled and they're pretty comfy. The heating does get pretty hot. You've also got lumbar adjustments, so I will take that. But then just touching on the interior design for a second, it does feel incredibly utilitarian in here. It does feel very off-roady, which of course is the point for the TRD Pro. You've got this kind of interesting texture on a lot of your surfaces here on your center console and on your dash. You've got the big Toyota with the red accenting here. And a lot of your controls are still physical and you love to see that. And a lot of them are rubberized too. Sometimes they're rubberized and have fake screws in them, which may be a little bit much, but generally speaking, it's a nice interior, especially in colder weather. It makes it easy to work with gloves. And then talking about some of the technology that you get here, you don't have a head-up display. Maybe I would expect it at this price point, maybe not, I'm not sure. But you do get a fully digital instrument cluster. The thing is, it always kind of looks like this. You can change some of the stuff on that left-hand quadrant, but even drive modes, the really only thing that's gonna change is that green lettering up there between eco, normal, and sport. That's really the only thing. So. As far as your digital instrument cluster, it's big, it's a nice screen, but it doesn't really do a whole lot. But this is an even bigger screen. This is your 14 inch infotainment, Toyota connected services, whatever they're calling it, but it's pretty good. You do get wireless Apple CarPlay, which is what we're running here, and that is pretty nice. You've also got really nice 360 cameras and the TRD Pros get these special trail cameras so I can see my tolerances on either side so I don't need a spotter for as much stuff, plus a gyroscope for your pitch and roll. You also get a wireless charger down here, which works okay. And then you've got Toyota Safety Sense 2.5, which is pretty good. It's not gonna be as good as on the unibody stuff like a RAV4 or a Highlander, but it is pretty good and nice to have here on this big Sequoia TRD Pro. And I just wanna talk about some general off-road stuff real quick. Now we talked about the Falcon Wild Peak tires. They're 33 inches here rather than the 32 you get on the Tundra TRD Pro. You've also got Fox shocks here, which give you a half inch of lift, but the remote reservoir is only on the rear. You get 9.1 inches of clearance, but you are gonna get over 10 on the Explorer Timberline, which will be the closest competitor to this thing. And you do get the TRD stuff, like the upper control arms. Your approach angle, 23 degrees. Departure angle, 20 degrees. But you do have some nice stuff on the interior to help you out. Toyota's MTS or multi-terrain select system is legendary and is great for off-roading different types of terrains. Downhill assist control and crawl controls like your off-road cruise and your of course downhill assist. So you do have some additional stuff in, in accordance with your normal drive modes. You also have a rear locking differential which is kind of nice but the problem is Toyota is the only one still giving you a part-time or selectable 4x4 system. Everyone from America is giving you a 4 auto system. So this is something that I'm really going to ding Toyota on here, especially for weather like this. It would be great to have a 4 auto system for your transfer case. And then I think there's just a couple little things that we should touch on before we go for a drive with Paulo. Like for one, there's little TRD Easter eggs all through your amber lights, your marker lights. You've got TRD on your center hubcaps. You've got TRD on your skid plate. TRD, I can't tell if you're seeing any of this because I'm under the car, but TRD on your shock bodies and TRD on your upper control arms. And you also have TRD on your exhaust here, which makes it less TRDs than the Tundra TRD Pro, but still plenty to let you know you're driving something special. And when you're closing the door, especially this rear one, you have to close it pretty hard. Now, not as hard as a G-Wagon, but if you close it just soft, it's not gonna close all the way. So you gotta give it a little bit of muscle. And interestingly now, Toyota in their body on frame trucks are one of the more American options you can get. And they want you to know that this little Easter egg under the hood is are indeed in Michigan and it's built or born in Texas. And your rear glass doesn't roll down like the 4Runner, but you push this little button and it lifts out. Kind of cool. And it feels kind of race car on the interior with a flat-ish bottom TRD, noon marker, red for your gear selector, and red for your TRD start button. You also have a digital rear view mirror, so if you have stuff blocking the back, can't see out of it, throw the digital rear view mirror on, you can see everything. And it wouldn't be a Toyota review without talking about the egg mode which has never helped anyone, but at least you can change the color 
of your Sequoia. And last thing, as always, is price. Now a Sequoia from Toyota starts at $61,275. If you want the full cool looking TRD Pro, those start at $79,110. And as tested, we are just under 83 grand. And that is a lot of money, but let's jump behind the wheel and see if it's worth that. In the Sequoia, loads of torque. Okay, so it doesn't, it doesn't feel slow. I mean, it's got almost 600 pound-feet of torque, 583 pound-feet, 437 horsepower. Uh, it's got two turbos, it's got some hybrid electric torque, so it doesn't feel slow. The only thing that I don't love about the power is just, it's bombarding you with, with fake V8 noise. And like, I just, <laughs> it's kind of a weird thing because, you know, Toyota's 5.7 iForce from the previous generation Sequoia and Tundra, and Tundra was legendary. Super reliable, made good sound. Obviously it wasn't super powerful or, you know, super efficient. So they have to adapt that. And there's just so many people that have become attached to that 5.7 that they almost identify Toyota trucks and, you know, these, these big, um, you know, SUVs, body on frame things with that powertrain. So they try to, try to synthesize it with some V8 noise, just to kind of, I don't want to say pander because that sounds bad, but and anyway, anyway, let's talk about anything other than, <laughs> other than the engine. It feels plenty torquey, it feels plenty powerful, and that's where you get the huge towing uh, capacity here. And it's not slow, it's like zero to 60 in under, I think six seconds, so that's pretty good. Um, behind the wheel though, it's, it's kind of typical body on frame stuff. You know, you don't have an air suspension uh, on the TRD Pro, it's Fox shocks, and the ride is pretty good. It's a little chattery. Some of the competitors are gonna give you air suspension on all four corners. You can get a Sequoia with a self-leveling rear air suspension for some uh, additional towing, but not on the TRD Pro. But then in terms of the steering, I mean, there's some deadness on center, but it's relatively responsive. You do have the Falcon Wild Peaks, the ATW3s, uh, I think they are, and they're pretty good. I mean, I haven't really had any issues and it's been, you know, snowy and super cold all week. So it's, it's been pretty confidence inspiring. Uh, so I, I don't mind that. It is just, you know, when, when I drive this thing in a vacuum and I don't think about anything else, I like it. I like the attitude. I like the look from the outside. I like the interior aside from the huge Toyota on the side, but it feels modern. It feels contemporary. It's a huge upgrade from, from where the previous Sequoia was. Um, it's just when you start to compare it to a Tahoe, to an Expedition Timberline, you know, the Timberline is a little bit more off-roady. You get a little bit more suspension lift and clearance and, you know, approach departure. And then the Tahoe does the luxury thing better than maybe the Capstone. And I think really my biggest issues are just the third row. I guess the second row headroom is pretty bad too, but the third row space is pretty bad. And then the trunk space is, I don't want to keep saying pretty bad, but leaves a bit to be desired. So if you really need a three row off-roader, I'm not so sure. But if you can get away with a two row, I would look, I would look at the Forerunner, I think. And that's gonna be, you know, getting into a new generation next year. So there'll be a lot of news to come on that front. But until then, in a vacuum, if you just like Toyota and you just like TRD Pro and you just love the look of this thing, go ahead, you know, it's it's good in a vacuum. But if you really are gonna cross shop a bunch of other stuff in the segment, then you might find some things about the competitors that are just a little bit better than the Sequoia here. But either way, thank you to Toyota for letting us have a go here. And if you're interested on how this compares to something like a Tahoe, a Suburban, uh, a Yukon, and then an Expedition, make sure you check out our, our video on Downshift where we compare the best and the rest of this to the rest of the field. And we'll see you then.